Today I seek to refer a matter to the Senate Environment and Communications Committee that has profound implications for the future of regional Australia. Senator Hanson, may I just interrupt you shortly so that you can move the motion and then continue your debate? Thank you. Okay. Move the motion. Thank you. Thank you. For some time now, farmers have been raising very serious concerns about a trial to capture carbon dioxide and store it in the Great Artesian Basin. This three-year trial has been proposed by a subsidiary of the multinational coal mining company Glencore. The trial proposes to capture waste carbon dioxide emissions from the Milmerran Power Station in Queensland, turn it into a supercritical fluid and inject up to 330,000 tonnes of it into the precipice sandstone aquifer. This aquifer is more than two kilometres deep inside the Great Artesian Basin, one of the most important natural resources in Australia. In the Great Artesian Basin, if the Great Artesian Basin was a country, it would be the 17th largest in the world at more than 1.7 million square kilometres. It's one of the largest groundwater basins on the planet, with almost 65 million gigalitres of water, enough to fill Sydney Harbour about 130,000 times over. It actually covers mainly Queensland, New South Wales, South Australia and part of the Northern Territory. Long before British settlement, springs of water emanating from the basin allowed Indigenous communities to travel and trade and survive in Australia. When it was discovered by settlers in the 1870s, it was quickly realised it was a vital water resource for the dry Australian interior. Since then, it has been essential in the development of our agricultural and mining industries and hundreds of regional, rural and remote communities. Water from the basin ports production worth almost $13 billion a year. It remains as essential today as it has always been. Australia is, after all, the driest inhabited continent on earth and every source of water, fresh water, is important. This is why I'm disturbed by the proposal to inject waste CO2 into the basin's water. I'm disturbed that while recent research has improved our knowledge of the basin, there is still much to learn and this makes for uncertain risks when introducing foreign material to the basin's groundwater. Even the proponent company's own commission study found the project could cause levels of lead and arsenic in the groundwater to rise hundreds of times beyond the safe drinking water guidelines. This would be due to increased acidity caused by the injection of supercritical CO2, leaching these heavy metals from the surrounding rocks and spreading it throughout aquifers in the basin. I'm also advised by expert geologist, Emirates Professor Ian Plymer of the University of Melbourne that this could result in significant clogging of the cracks and fractures in the surrounding rocks, thereby limiting the places where bores can be placed or reducing the rate of flow at other bores. I acknowledge Glencore's subsidiary, Carbon Transport and Storage Corporation, has stressed the groundwater in the precipice sandstone aquifer is already non-potable and so deep it would be expensive for a farmer to sink a bore. I acknowledge that some of the science says the risks of the project are minimal and manageable. However, the science on the basin is not complete and our farmers have been down this road before with fracking. They have legitimate, legitimate concerns about the contamination of groundwater in the basin, so much so that Queensland's Ag Force organisation has this week announced it would launch a legal challenge. Ag Force says it will seek a judicial review of the decision taken in 2022 that found the project did not need to be assessed under the EPBC Act. That's Environmental Protection Act. Agfor says confidence in our food supply is at genuine risk because of the proposal. I agree with them. Although there are many more genuine risks to our food supply thanks to Labor's multiple attacks on Australia's world-leading agricultural sector, 
Let's list some of them. Ending live sheep exports that support thousands of regional jobs, crippling energy and fuel costs, and farm land polluted by 28,000 kilometres of transmission lines thanks to Labor's suicidal net zero policy. Labor's terrible closing the loopholes, legislation destroying casual and seasonal employment and forcing a great deal more red and green tape on farmers. And Labor and the Greens forcing more water from irrigators through devastating buybacks that destroy communities in the Murray-Darling Basin for no environmental benefit. Labor has an opportunity here to show some belated support for our struggling farmers. Labor has an opportunity here to protect one of the most important natural resources in this country. It's clear to me that a great deal less potential harm would come from simply letting the CO2 into the atmosphere than pumping it into the great artesian basin. Yeah, yeah. At least it would benefit the crops and pastures being grown by our farmers. This project is a bit of a canary in the coal mine. Its success or failure will have implications for similar projects in the future. We know there are already some existing applications. So Glencore is just the start. Glencore is the first, but how many others will be given the right to dispose of their CO2 in the basin? Of course, none of this would be happening if the major parties weren't grovelling to climate change zealots and pursuing the net zero fantasy. This fantasy drives policy into ridiculous outcomes like vast areas of pristine rainforest being cleared for wind farms or wind turbines. They're not a farm. It's, it's destroying the word farm. Wind turbines, destroying the environment in order to save it. And what a joke that is. You cry out, and the Greens cry out the loudest in this place about the environment, yet I don't hear them screaming out against the wind turbines that are actually clearing hundreds of thousands of acres of land, of rainforests, destroying the habitat and the flora and fauna, and you say nothing about it. It does more damage, but you keep putting them up, and then the fear of fire, they catch fire, which, is, which they do, and then you destroy prime agricultural land to put up your solar panels. That's another disgraceful act that I see happening throughout Queensland and the rest yeah. of the country. All these solar panels. And um, our farmers can't clear the land to grow crops, but you can clear the land to put solar panels. No problem with that. Let's clear the land. But you even you know, stop people from moving a tree off their lands for some reason or other, but no, let's, let's clear it to put up solar wind farms and, and um, solar panels and wind turbines. Yet none of this is saving anything. It's not helping to reduce the world's carbon dioxide emissions, which is supposed to be the ultimate goal of the net zero fantasy. That's exactly what it is. Global emissions continue to rise. It's not saving us any money. It costs us billions in taxpayer subsidies and it's driving more Australian households into poverty thanks to record high energy costs. We've also gone through this carbon capture stuff before with last year's sea dumping bill. The idea that natural formations can form permanent, perfectly sealed storages from which CO2 won't eventually escape is ludicrous. Nature is not that perfect, despite what the Greens would have us believe. They are on about it again today, crying their crocodile tears about 2023 being the hottest year on record. Since when? You stopped taking records up before 1910. The end of the 18th century here was so hot. hot. Oh, you don't want that recorded because it proved that temperatures were hotter then than what they are today. But we didn't have industrialisation. We didn't have you know, um, the cities that are built up. So actually, you have to just get rid of all those there. You know, only as far as 1910. The planet Earth is more than four and a half billion years old. And the evidence is undeniable. It has been both much hotter and much cooler in the past due to influences that have nothing to do with us humans. We have only been on Earth for, what, most 
300,000 years. But that doesn't stop green activists from traumatising our children and bankrupting with, with um, confected tales of global doom. And the Labor Party have, have gone along with this as well. As I said, the sea dumping was disgraced, what happened last year, and I spoke about it. And there is no place in the world that it has worked, that it stays captured. But no, we went along with this. And when I asked the minister with regards to the sea dumping um, and commercial arrangements could be made with other countries to bring their rubbish out here, wasn't interested. She said, oh, no, that's uh, commercial arrangements with other companies. has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with the Labor Party because you've allowed it in your legislation for sea dumping to happen in Australia. And that's why it has got a lot to do with you. The same as this Great Artesian Basin, allowing CO2 to be dumped in there, that we don't know the risks, science is not clear on this, and yet if you allow this to happen, you could destroy Queensland farming sector, communities, towns, drinking water. We don't know. Are you prepared to play around with that? Are you prepared to take the risk? Or most of you will be going out the back door probably in the next few years, so it's, it's no concern of yours. Let the future generations can, you know, deal with that. It's no concern of ours. You're more interested in, in the next election getting yourself elected again to protect your own jobs without looking down the future of this country and what's happening out there. Five mayors across Queensland have actually said they are against this. They are saying, don't allow this to happen. Stop. And Glencore is just the start of it. right? So they go through this trial and then they're allowed to actually dump this. Then that's only the start of it, of, of all these other organisations, to actually dump this CO2. As I said, 330 tonnes of this supercritical waste. 330,000 tonnes. That's the damage, and you, no one here, you could absolutely tell me that it wouldn't be you know, a risk. It is at one hell of a risk. We only have so much water on this earth, so much water in Australia. You've done nothing to improve our water supply in this nation, and if you haven't built more dams or anything, you've let it slide, you're high immigration, you haven't prepared for the future for increased population growth, and yet if you allow this to happen, this destroys our artesian basin. What's your plan then? Oh, that's right, Labor never has a second plan. <clears throat> they don't know where to go after that. Oh, yes, you do. You always blame the previous government. <laughs> it's their fault. That's your plan. You always believe the pre blame the previous government of what's happened, what's gone wrong, because you don't think ahead. You have no idea of how to plan for the future. You're absolutely hopeless what you do. Now, I'm putting this up um, for the vote. And common sense should prevail here that you do not allow this to go ahead. You stop it from happening. And I hope the Greens are on board with this because if they don't support this motion for it to go to an inquiry, well, then they're hypocrites, absolute hypocrites, hear, hear. if this is not supported. Always screaming about the environment, always screaming about fracking, always screaming about everything of the damage to, to our nation and country and all the rest of it. So I hope that the Greens actually do vote for this, for it to go to inquiry, so we have an investigation into this. And Senator Pocock, I hope he's watching. And I hope that Senator David Pocock has always got, you know, his control of the Senate here, that he actually does see common sense that it needs to go to an inquiry so that we can actually have a greater understanding of the implications that may happen. And I thank um, Professor Ian Plymer for his information that he's given me, because this is a man with real knowledge who understands the science of the whole lot, has told me and informed me of the implications and what could happen. Now, I am prepared to listen to him, then I am prepared to listen to the Labor Party in this chamber who actually put a spin on, on so many of the policies and who wiped their hands of it and couldn't care less because it's in the too hard basket. I wish we'd get some people with some knowledge in this place. Honestly, the incompetence. You know, you have no idea what you're talking about when it comes to climate change and what's actually happening. You're just fear-mongering.